My soul proclaims the greatness, the greatness of the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. The Lord be with you. Shall we pray? Through our worship today, may we discern how the gifts that God has given us, as individuals and as a community, are to be brought into the open and used in the ongoing task of building Christ's kingdom. Amen. Well, good morning everyone. I hope you are all well this morning. Lovely to see you all here today and thank you uh, to those of you who are wearing uh, face masks this morning. Uh, a chat with our Archdeacon said that wearing face masks allows us to show our love for our fellow beings because as we know some of us may be uh, asymptomatic and uh, sort of not showing signs of Covid but by wearing a mask it makes sure that we don't spread it to those around us. So it's a wonderful sign of Christian love when we wear our masks. So thank you very much indeed for doing that. I have a couple of notices this morning. The first one is that those of you um, who have come here for the last two weeks for our Sunday morning worship, next week we shall be at Lamerton. And then the plan is we will alternate between Lamerton and Milton Abbott. The Parish Magazine will be going online today and I'll be emailing everybody a copy today as well. So please keep your eye on uh, the website, just detailing exactly when the, uh, the services are taking place. The second notice for today is some of you will know that we are having a virtual summer fair. Um, if you go on to our Facebook page, Again, details are in the magazine. If you go onto our Facebook page, you can take part in our virtual summer fair where you can guess the way to the cake, name the teddy bear. Um, uh, there's a, a raffle, a, all sorts of little bits and pieces to take part in to raise funds for Milton Abbott Church and our bells. So can I encourage you to go and take part in that? And also, you can have a cream tea as well. So do... Uh, do go online and have a look at that. Now also, because this is the second Sunday that we are back in church, it also means that we have the wonderful job of being able to call bands of marriage. And we get to call the bands of marriage today for Richard and for Emily. So good morning to you. Hope you're all well. And uh, we shall read those now. So I published the bands of marriage between Richard Matthew Jinman of Milton Abbott and Emily Harriet Palmer, also of Milton Abbott. And this is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, then you are to declare it now. So shall we now pray for Richard and for Emily? Lord, the source of all true love, we pray for Richard and Emily this morning. Grant to them joy of heart, seriousness of mind and reverence of spirit, that as they enter into the oneness of marriage, they may be strengthened and guided by you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as we come together to worship this morning, we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments 
hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Secure in the knowledge that nothing in life or death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, we penitentially confess all that holds us back from living as God's beloved children. So in a moment of silence, let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now shall we now stand as we give thanks to God in the words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. As we remain standing in silence, let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seeds, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, please be seated for our first reading. The first reading is 1 Kings, chapter 3, 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now the Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant here among the people you have chosen, a great people are too numerous to count or number. So give me your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to 
distinguish between right and wrong, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? And the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this, so he gave him, so he said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will be never, so that will there never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he has also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, sadly, we are still unable to sing in church, but that gives us the opportunity, as we did last week, to sit, to listen to some hymns, to listen to some words, and if you wish to sing in your head, then sing loudly.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I was saying to Richard a few moments ago before the service started, and I do apologise, I did start a few minutes early. I'm afraid the time on my mobile phone is slightly out. But I was saying to Richard before we started that it used to be the worst thing that the vicar could forget was to light the candles on the altar. But now we've got to remember to switch that camera on, switch that camera on, we'll do the sound, the surround sound, the two microphones. So if it all works, it will be sign that God still does miracles today. So let us hope. <laughs> now, on the outside of the vicarage, set among the natural stone, there is this rather small brick. And this small brick is in a sort of a lattice pattern and it's got lots of tiny little holes and tubes in it. And this leads into, I suppose, what would have been the larder to help with ventilation. And over the summer, I noticed that these tiny little holes, these little tubes, were well, one by one, they were slowly getting blocked up with what looked like mud. So after a rather short piece of Googling, I discovered that they were, in fact, what does anybody know? Bees. Bees. But they're a special kind of bee. Thank you. I was going to say, we, we, have, a, we have a bee expert, or, or, the, or, or the spouse of a bee expert, should I say. Well, I discovered that they were called red mason bees. And these little bees should be welcomed into just about any garden because they are fantastic pollinators and they are really important. And these solitary little bees are attracted to containers that are filled with little short lengths of something like bamboo sticks and that sort of thing. And what they do is they sort of crawl inside, or the female crawls inside, should I say, carrying a tiny quantity of mud. And slowly she makes a small mud-lined chamber, lays an egg, adds a little larder of pollen, closes the chamber with more mud, and then builds the next and the next and the next, proceeding back down the little hollow stick or tube until she reaches the entrance, which she then seals tight. 
So hidden away in the dark, her eggs will hopefully hatch and the larva will feed, grow, and eventually, we hope, develop into a new generation of adult bees. However, this little red mason bee knows that predators such as parasitic wasps and woodpeckers, well, there's a danger that they could pick the mud away and devour her brood. Hence then that she lays her most precious eggs, the female ones, in the safest place of that little chamber, the one that is furthest away from the entrance. Now, just as we've heard that these little solitary bees bury their eggs so that they might be fruitful, each of today's parables revolves around things that are hidden. A mustard seed that requires sowing to germinate, yeast that is mixed, or to use the old English translation that says hid, buried treasure, a pearl that must be searched for, fish trawled from the depths of the sea, out of the tiny, the insignificant, the hidden, where we know that the kingdom of heaven blossoms. There is an abundance in this blossoming. The mustard seed, which at best grows to an annual bush, which is about nine feet high, is then transformed into a mighty tree, reminiscent of that described by Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 4, which shelters all the birds of the air. The yeast is added to three measures of flour, the same volume, coincidentally, that Sarah uses to provide for the three heavenly visitors in Genesis 18, which produces enough bread to feed a small village. The hidden treasure and the great pearl are worth everything that their finders possess, and the net thrown into the sea catches fish of every kind. More than that, the kingdom is derived from ordinary people's daily toil. Farming, homemaking, commerce, fishing, not the actions of political, military or religious leaders. It is not a kingdom of borders, but it is a kingdom of shelter. All the birds of the air are welcome in its branches. Fish of every kind are caught in its net. It offers abundant food to every resident. The parables of the hidden treasure and the great pearl, well, they link back to Solomon in our reading this morning. And the kingdom also values wisdom over riches and earthly power. But there is an important link in the parable, I'm sorry, to that of the parable which we've mentioned of the net which reinforces the message of the parable of the weeds earlier in this chapter. It says that not everyone accept God's kingdom offer, not everyone shares its values or lives by its precepts. Now, as I have observed this summer, the red mason bee works hard to protect her buried eggs and they have to work even harder in our garden as they try and dodge the low-flying golf balls. But thankfully, on reaching maturity, will her brood strive towards the light. Their most important work, requiring determination and the right instinct, well, that takes place hidden from sight. And there is a tendency to view these parables this morning as images of the church working its purposes out, developing from a small seed to a massive tree. But they aren't about the church. They are parables of the kingdom. It is not a treasure to be acquired or something that an individual can exclusively possess. Rather, it is a gracious gift from God, a way of being, ongoing and eternal, into which we are offered the opportunity to enter freely, wholeheartedly, and with total commitment. 
The kingdom is less like a physical nation, and it's more like Solomon's wisdom. God's gift of knowledge that, if used well, protects, shelters, nurtures, and feeds all people, not just one individual. Many of us have to work hard to discover seeds of the kingdom which are buried deep in our own heart, and we need to commit our energy and focus to nurturing them in order that they can blossom with abundance when the cares of the world threaten to squeeze them dry. But we must also remember that God is eternally doing kingdom work in the life of each of us. Sometimes the smallest, least noticed gestures of kindness and selflessness provide that richest soil for God's kingdom to grow and flourish in us and around us. Amen. Now, shall we now stand as we profess together our Christian faith? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, of God of compassion, in this COVID crisis, we ask you to be close to those anywhere in the world who are desperately ill today, those who may die today, and for, for the bereaved friends and families who may not have been able to be with them. Be with all those who are afraid or in isolation, or with the lonely, or those suffering physical or mental abuse, with those who are anxious, with those who are suffering the trauma of disruption to their traffic, to, to their long-awaited holidays into, into Spain. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for our faith, the rock which grows and sustains us. We pray for all those who are seeking, and we pray for our church, for our bishops, Robert, Nick and Jackie, and for our clergy, especially our own Andy, as we gradually emerge from lockdown into the post COVID dawn. Fill them all with your light and fresh inspiration. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for our world. 
for our democracy and for our peace and security. We pray for all those suffering the barbarism of persecution, especially the million, the millions of Rohingya Muslims suffering in both China and Burma. We think of the people of Hong Kong. Dear Lord, strengthen and empower the international community to bring pressure on the governments oppressing these peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for our friends and family. We pray, take a moment now to think of anyone within our own friends and family. Especially we think of John, Jeff, Pete, Richard, Georgie, Graham, Margaret, Claudia, Steve, and Gordon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, we pray for all those who have left us. May they rest in your peace and rise in your glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, shall we now stand for the peace? And I wonder if, as we respond with and also with you, would you like to just turn around and to look at your brothers and sisters in the congregation as we wish the peace upon us all this morning. Through the love of Christ, we are raised to be more than conquerors. We are charged with being peacemakers, servants of God's holy kingdom. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Well, please be seated. Please be seated. Our second hymn which we're going to listen to this morning is I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a parent tenderly gathers their children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to suffer with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand with you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power, be yours for ever and ever. Amen. We pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink these holy gifts in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We say together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. For our final hymn this morning, we are going to sit and listen to In Christ Alone.
Well, shall we pray? Over this coming week, as we continue to stay alert, to control the virus, to protect the NHS and to save lives, my prayer for you all will be that you will all stay safe, stay well, stay connected and stay firm in your faith. Amen. Well, shall we bow our heads now as we pray for God's blessing upon us all. May the Father who searches our hearts fill us with divine love. May Christ, the firstborn Son, confirm us in our adoption as God's children. May the Spirit, who helps us in our weakness, draw us into the everlasting kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us now and forever. Amen. Our service is now ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. in the sky are also on the faces of people passing by I see friends shaking